Okay, so now that we've discussed the idea of closure properties and the general proof sketch of how to um, show that a closure property holds, uh, we're gonna start actually proving some of these um, claims that I made about uh, closure properties on regular languages, okay? And so the very first one that we're gonna do is actually the one that I started here, which um, will be the union. And so the first claim here is that um, regular languages are closed under the union. Okay, so what does that actually mean? That means that uh, take any pair of regular languages, L1 and L2, okay? And for the sake of simplicity, let's just fix the alphabet to AB. Um, so the claim then is for any um, pair of regular languages, where the languages are over the alphabet a b then l1 union l2 is also regular okay so that's the claim now we actually have to provide a proof but before we provide our proof a proof let's just um, illustrate what exactly this is saying right so let's start with an illustration of the claim okay so what the claim is saying is that um, I'll use the same example I used before if I have say L1 is um, any number of, of a is n where n is even and L2 is any number of b's bn where n is odd, okay, um, we know that both of these languages are regular. So both L1 and L2 are regular. Okay, now why is this true? Well, simply because we can create FAs to accept both of these languages, right? So um, an FA to L1 could be the following. So in this case, I'm gonna create an NFA, right? I'm not gonna bother with reading any Bs, right? Because the language actually L1 only cares about the A's, right? And the only thing it cares about the A's is that it has an even number of them. So I'm just going to create the even odd uh, machine, um, where you're, you'll, you'll remember that the idea was just you're flipping a parity bit back and forth, and so you have one state for an even number of A's, and you have another state for an odd number of A's, and you're just flipping back and forth. You start at an even number of A's state because um, if you read no A's, you have zero A's, and zero is an even number. So it makes sense for the start state to be um, the state that encodes an even number of A's, okay? And then you just flip back and forth, okay? And you wanna make the state for an even number of A's the accept state, right? And so this is an NFA because there are no transitions for B. Okay, so in other words, if this is say Q1 and this is Q2, we have, for instance, delta Q1 of B is the empty set. Okay, so uh, you're never gonna accept anything with a B because as soon as you do, your machine jams, which means that it stops reading the string. And remember, for an NFA to accept a string, it has to be able to go through, read, read or go through the whole string, okay? And so a similar idea for L2. So I can construct a machine L2, which is again going to be an NFA. And it's again going to be the same idea, except that now the transitions are going to be 
for Bs. And my final state is now going to be the one that encodes an odd number of Bs. Okay, so I have these two regular languages, L1 and L2. Okay, um, now is L1 union L2 regular? Okay, well, essentially, okay, what this is asking is just if you have um, this language, right? So this language. I'm just basically rewriting it, but in explicit form. Okay, so it's asking if this is regular. Okay, well, we can show that this specific example is regular by constructing um, another machine that accepts it, right? So for this specific language, answer, the answer to this question will be yes, because I can construct a new machine that accepts it. Machine that accepts L1 union L2. Okay. And what is that machine going to look like? Well, what it's going to look like, it's going to be exactly the same machines as before. Okay. So it's going to be the machine. Um, M1 and the machine, let's call this Q3 and Q4. Okay. So this is machine M1 and this is the machine M2. Now, these are going to be the building blocks to create my larger machine M prime. So remember, L of M prime should accept a union. And now remember, in I in the, the, the hint or essentially the, the intuition um, of constructing this machine and how it's going to lead us to actually prove this more general claim, right? So remember, this is just an illustration of the claim, but I also wanna show you how this is going to give you um, an idea of how to prove this in general, is that I want to use, right? So the goal is to use M1 and M2 in the construction of M prime. Well, how do I do this? In this case, I have to reason about what the semantics or the logic of my language now are, okay? And the new meaning of my language is either the string accepted, um, or either the string belonging to the new language is an L1, or, it belongs to L2. And so then my machine, what it needs to do is it first needs to guess whether the string is going to belong to L1 or L2, right? And so the idea then, so then the idea is before passing an input string, W to M prime, okay, M prime must guess whether W is in L1 or W is in L2, right? And that's exactly what the convenience of an NFA of non-determinism gives us, is that it can allow us to create a machine where you can guess, okay? And how do I guess? Well, I can just create a new start state. So this is a new start state that guesses, right? That guesses whether the input string should be processed by M1 or should be processed by M2. And so the way that it guesses is that it says, okay, I'm going to connect to, to M1 and M2 but I don't want to read any of the string before going to M1 or M2. And so to do that, you can use a free transition or an empty string transition, right? So that means that I'm going to connect Q0 to Q1 
with the empty string transition, right? So why am I doing this, right? Why? Because I don't want to consume, consume any of the input string yet, right? I only want to consume it once I get the string to the correct guess, right? To the correct guessed machine. So either the correct guess is this input string to go to M1 and then M1 to process it. And then um, the string should end up in say this final state Q1, or it should make the other alternative guess and bring the input string to the machine M2. Okay. In which case the input string will transition through the machine and then should end up in Q4 if the string is indeed in the language L2, right? And so this bigger machine here now accepts the language L1 union L2, okay? So now um, let's make a bigger box. So this machine M prime, M prime accepts any and exactly any string in L1 union L2 and no other string. Okay. Okay. And so this, this can be formalized by a double subset inclusion proof, but you could just look at this machine and try to convince yourself if you have an input string um, and it actually belongs to the union, then that means that one of the two machines M1 or M2 is going to accept it. And so if your machine just guesses the correct one, then M prime will actually accept W, okay? And then if M prime actually accepts a string, that means that it would have guessed um, one of these two machines. And we know that one of these two machines accepts exactly uh, the language L1 or L2, okay? So that's how you would sort of do this for one particular um, example, okay? So um, you'll note here, right? So the note here, okay? So note, oops, let's, okay. Note, this was for a particular L1 and L2. Now, how do we do this in general, right? How do we show this in general? Okay, so that is, um, if I have L1 is regular, right? That means that I have a DFA M1, which I'll write as the five tuple as Q1, Sigma, Delta one, Q0 one, and then F1, right? So um, the, the DFA M1 is just a five tuple, um, you know, states, transitions, initial state, accept states, okay? Now, the only thing I've done is I've said um, they're, they're denoted by the subscript or superscript one just to identify them with the DFA M1, right? And that's because um, I have another regular language L2, which will be accepted by some DFA M2. And I'm going to denote that DFA again by a five tuple, um, but now with superscript or subscript two, okay? And so now what I wanna do is from this arbitrary, right? So this is an arbitrary um, pair of languages L1, L1, L2, pair of regular languages L1, L2 and an arbitrary pair of DFAs M1 and M2, okay? And so now to create M prime such that L of M prime is equal to L1 union L2, right? Then I need to create a general construction from M1 and M2, right? Need the general construction 
for m prime, which I'll denote as a new five tuple, q prime, sigma, delta prime, q zero prime, and f prime. Okay, so I need to define these new elements of my tuple right, with respect to the two initial machines that I have, okay, with respect to the values of their tuples, okay, the values within these tuples, okay. Um, and so how do I do this, right? Well, I know that the intuition of M prime is going to be, I'm going to have some larger machine, right, okay. M prime is going to have a new initial state, let's call it, um, Q zero prime. Okay. And Q zero prime is either is going to guess that it's either going to go to M one, right? M one has its start state Q zero one. It has some final states. Okay. Or it's going to guess correctly, right? Because what you can assume about NFAs is that they can guess and they can guess correctly. Okay. That um, the input string should actually go to M2 instead. Okay, and M2 has its set of final states, right? It has its own transition function, which uh, for M2 is defined by delta 2, and for M1 is defined by delta 1. Okay, and so this is actually the construction, right? The construction. The only thing we need to do now, right? The only thing that's left is to formalize it. Formalize the construction. And so what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that is define explicitly. the values um, of the tuple m prime, okay? So I have m prime, which is a five tuple. Um, it consists of a set of states. So what is this set of states going to be? Well, it's going to be the states of m1, right? So q1, as well as the states in m2. So union the states in m2. And finally, it's also going to include this extra initial state, Q0 prime, right? So it's going to, we're going to add to the set of states containing the states in Q1 and the states in Q2, also the state Q0 prime. So what this is doing is that um, creates, right? So what we're doing here explicitly is we create a new set of states composed of Q1, so the set of states of M1, Q2, the set of states of M2, and this extra start state Q0 prime, which serves the purpose of guessing whether the input string should go to M1 or it should go to M2, okay? So, I'm going to skip the transition function because that typically ends up being the most complicated part of the construction. Um, and I'm going to go to the start state of M prime. Well, the start state of M prime is this new guy, right? So the start state of M prime, um, I'll redefine as just this new start state, okay? I just, I, I sort of picked the, okay, let's, let's say that Let's just change this notation. Let's say that this is um, uh, S, okay. S for start state. Then the start state of this machine M prime, right? So just think of this as the start state of M prime, okay, is defined as Q zero prime. Lastly, before we get to the transition function, what will be the new set of accept states? Right. The new set of accept states, right? So this is the new set 
accept states. That's going to be the union, right? Or um, yeah, it's going to be the union of the accept states of M1 and the accept states of M2, right? Why? Because in this larger machine M prime, the accept states are the ones in M1, right? And the ones in M2, okay? Now the last and most important part is the new transition function. So the new transition function. Function of M prime, which we define as delta prime. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to define the transition delta prime based on some cases. Because here we can see that uh, using natural language will probably lead to some very like convoluted descriptions. So the best way is really to define the transition function explicitly and also do it by cases. So for instance, uh, in my machine M prime, if I'm already in M1, then I just use the transition function um, of M1, delta one. If I'm already in M2, then I just use the transitions of M2 following delta two. So then the only other case is if I start, right, if I'm at in the, the computation of my machine, if my machine is at state Q0 prime, right? In that case, if it's reading empty string, right, it can only read the empty string. It won't do anything um, to read uh, a non-empty letter, right? So again, I'm just saying that at Q0 prime, you don't want to consume any input, right? So the only transition that you'll allow will be for the empty string. And once you once you read an empty string, right, you either go to Q01 or Q02. And so you have a, a set of possibilities, right? You have a set of states that you can go to, okay? And so now I'm just going to translate what I just said, but in more explicit mathematical notation. So. Suppose I'm in some state Q and I'm reading some letter sigma, okay? So if Q is state from M1, right? So if Q is in Q1, which is just the set of states of M1, and the letter I'm reading is not empty, right? It's part of the alphabet, right? So what this is doing is it's just not introducing an additional empty string transition, right? So if this is true, then um, the transition of M prime will just be the same as the transition for M1, right? So then what this is saying is that um, what M prime does, if it's Q1 reading A or B, is the same thing as what M1 would do, okay? And then, the same thing for M2. So if the state is actually from a state in M2, okay, then that means that I need to use the transition function from M2. Finally, the only other thing that could happen is if Q is Q0 prime and sigma, the letter that I'm reading is actually the empty string. In this case, I have a set of possibilities, right? There's a set of states that I could go to. Either I can go to Q01 or I can go to Q02. So in this case, I'm guessing W should be processed by M1. In this case, I'm guessing that W should be processed by M2, okay? And in any other case, right? So otherwise, otherwise, transition function returns the empty set, okay? So this is just a guarantee that you don't introduce any additional um, transitions and also makes a delta prime a proper function okay so this is just to um, so this extra case 
extra case makes delta prime a proper function. Okay, and by proper I means I mean that it's defined for its whole domain. Okay, whatever you know, I'm not going to get into what exactly the domain is um, because that's a whole other tangent. But you'll understand that this just means that um, this otherwise just says that if it's not in any of these cases, then you just don't do anything, right? So that means that um, if you're here, then you never actually consume an A to get to here, right? The only way that you can actually transition from Q0 prime to Q01, right? So I should make explicit that this is a one and this is a prime, okay? The only way to do that is to use this lambda transition. You can't do that with the transition uh, with reading an A or reading a B, okay? And so this, right, from sort of this, the start of stating what the assumptions are to um, the sketch of what the, the machine and prime is, to finally the formalization, this actually, right, is the construction. So have constructed M prime such that L of M prime is equal to L1 leaving L2. The only thing we're not gonna do is, right, this won't be proved, okay? But intuitively, right, the argument is just um, a double subset inclusion proof, right? So um, to show this, you need to say, now take any string accepted by this machine M prime, right? If it's accepted by this machine M prime, that means it starts here and it has some path to some final state, which is either here or some final state, which is either here. Um, and that means that the string is actually the empty string concatenated with the original string. And this original string is processed by M1 or M2. But we know that M1 and M2 accept um, the language L1. And so that means that any string accepted by M prime is also in the union and vice versa, right? So if you have um, some string in the union, it's either in L1 or in L2. If it's in L1, that means that it gets accepted here. If it's in L2, it means that it gets accepted in here. So then you only need to tack on an empty string to that string. And then you'll see that that, um, that giving that new string to M prime leads it to processing uh, and accepting the original string, which is either in L1 or in, in L2, okay? And so uh, this kind of completes the, the, the argument um, to showing why, right? And so the final line that I'll write is therefore regular languages closed under the union. Okay. So that means that now, okay, based on this result, if you take any regular language L1, right, maybe it's, um, you know, any string that starts with an A, and then any other regular language, maybe it's any string that ends with a B, you take their union, okay, then you know absolutely for certain that this union of regular languages will also be regular. And so you don't have to actually create a new FA to accept this language because by the closure properties, we know that this new language, which is the union of regular of two regular languages is regular. 